Does that happen to you guys as well? You must be bad luck. I can smell the gas. First time today. It's you. So I have been able to determine it only happens to me in the summertime. Never happens in the winter. I've had this 261 for about three years now. Not sure why, thought maybe there was something wrong with the M-Tronic, so I took it into run at the chainsaw clinic. I described the problem, first thing he asked me, how long do you let it idle after you've used it before you shut it off? Kind of stumped me. Thought for a bit and, well, you guys have seen on the videos, usually once I've finished bucking for a while or dropping a tree, as soon as she idles down, I shut it off. That's a big mistake, he told me. I'm not a mechanic and I'm not that mechanical, but I think he said something to the effect of vapor lock or something to do with that. What happens is your gas and your engine is really hot and you need to let it idle for a while before you shut it off. Otherwise, this is what happens. I took a look at my manual. Sure enough, on page 30, it says the same thing. After running the saw for a while, let it idle for a while. I'm not sure what a while is before shutting it off. So I hope that's helpful for you folks as well if you're experiencing the same problem. And hey, while we're here, let me answer a question I get a lot lately on the channel. Many of you good folks have asked me what I carry in my arborist pouch when I'm out in the forest. Well, let me show you. First up, whether I've got my pouch on or not, I always carry my first aid kit. This is the Chainsaw Solo Trauma Kit. It's made by Steve down at Forest Safety Products in the US. I picked myself up a carabiner. That way I can easily hook it to my suspenders or a belt loop. So whether I've got the pouch on or not, I've always got this with me in handy. You can pick them up from Steve directly down in the US or if you're in Canada, I also carry them on my website. Next thing up, my scrunch of course. You're gonna need that in the forest. I carry my hand files. Now that I've picked up hand filing both of my saws, if I'm taking my 261 and my 462 back in the forest, I bring both files. That way I can do a quick touch up every time I fill up with fuel. This loggers tape, you folks will remember I picked this up about a year ago. This simple loggers tape has become pretty indispensable to us out in the forest. So much easier to measure off your lengths, especially with all the trees we've been felling the last few summers, as well as all of the trees we've been taking down, trying to cut up and drag out of the forest on the target range build. Highly recommend it. Really simple, easy way to mark your lengths and keep them consistent, especially when it comes to firewood. You're also gonna need something to mark your lengths. So I carry some tire chalk with me, just in the side pouch here. It works okay, it's not the best. It doesn't disintegrate like normal chalk, but I've yet to find the right type of marking tool for these logs, but for now it's, it's doing the trick. I carry four wedges with me. There's a couple of reasons for that. <laughs> First one is Husky Bob and Guy always steal them on me, so I wanna make sure I've got enough if I'm out there. The other thing I've learned over the last number of years is based on the size or the diameter of the trees that we end up cutting or felling out here, you don't really need long wedges because we don't cut a lot of big diameter stuff. So I carry some of these smaller wedges, much easier and much more suited to the size of trees that we cut out here. I've tried a few times using the longer wedges on some of the trees here and you just find they're far too long. In fact, the 10 inch or the eight inch one that I've got, they'll end up, you'll pound them in and you're gonna end up to the front of that back cut and you're stuck right in the wood. And you certainly don't have any room to finesse your saw back in there to cut a little bit more. So definitely these smaller wedges, four, six inches, they're must have. I also found over the years that one or two wedges isn't enough. There's a number of times when you're gonna to need to put multiple wedges into that back cut. You wanna make sure that you've got it in in a couple of different spots. The pouch itself, I introduced this to you folks, I think spring of last year. I picked it up from a place called Weaver Arborist down in the States, they make them there. It's all leather. One thing I love about this pouch, it's just the right size. 
has this riveted ring for hanging your loggers tape or your first aid kit. Nice big belt loops with a space, which is necessary by the way, so you can get a belt loop in between. And the shape, they've shaped the back of this leather so it kind of hugs your thigh. That way it kind of wraps around, it's got a natural fit and it hangs pretty easily. You're gonna need a belt though. And you guys know I'm not a big fan of belts, which is why a lot of times you'll see if I'm not gonna be needing the pouch right on me, I'll often bring it with me, put it down on the ground. And that way I've just got suspenders on and I don't have a belt wrapped around my waist. I find them kind of a little uncomfortable when you're bending constantly. I've been considering lately maybe getting a pair of those suspenders or that brace that comes down over your shoulders and hanging it off of that. I haven't quite made the decision yet. So let me show you what I don't carry with me in my arborist pouch. I don't carry my eight or my 10 inch wedge with me. As I mentioned, we just don't run into that big a diameter tree too often, but I do bring them with me. They're usually in the back of the tractor or they're sitting in a trailer or in my big tool rack. I also don't carry the file for my rakers or my raker gauge. You don't need them in the forest. If you've started hand filing like I've been learning to do over the last two summers, you'll find that you very seldom ever have to take those rakers down. And certainly if you've done your sharpening in the morning like I usually do, and all you're doing is you're just touching up throughout the day every time you fill the tank, you're never gonna find that you also need to take the rakers down when you're out in the forest for the day. It's usually something I check in the morning before I leave. So these stay in the tractor. And just to complete the picture, yep, always bring extra fuel as well as bar oil. I've got a long handled ax now, a lot easier hammering those wedges in with this. Weighs a lot more than the old hatchet I used to use. And lastly, you might hit a rock. You gotta bring spare chains, especially if you're out there for the day. You don't wanna be a couple acres or 10 or 20 acres back, hit a rock and have to pack everything up, drive all the way back down the concession to get another chain. If you've hit a rock before, you know it's not a quick file. You're in it for about an hour to an hour and a half. You've got 40 or 50 strokes per tooth to try to bring those teeth back. So it's just a lot easier to bring a few spare chains. I used that chain locker, I showed you folks this, I think last summer. You could buy them directly from Chain Locker in the US or you can get them from me up in Canada on my website. It's not watertight, but it's more or less water resistant. And that way you've always got a few spare chains with you. It'll give you a quick change out in the forest if you don't feel like filing, especially if they're really dull. It just saves a lot of time. And that way, if you have a couple of chains that are dull and need filing, you grab a coffee, you sit down at the workbench, you get them done. And you're gonna need water, plenty of water. Especially as you start to get up to my age, you gotta stay hydrated out there. You get fatigued very quickly if you don't. So hey, that's my gear. I carry it with me day in and day out, whenever I'm back there. Saves me having to run back to the cottage in the middle of the day, and it keeps me going. I got everything I need out there. I hope this has been helpful for you folks that are just new to property or you've just started learning or you've bought your first chainsaw and you're trying to decide what other types of gear you might need out in the forest. I remember, as I've said before, you don't have to be a professional logger or a professional sawyer to have good quality PPE or good quality equipment. It just makes the job a whole lot easier. Speaking of which, I better get back there. Husky Bob and Guy are waiting on me. Cheers. Oh, my God.